test it. Let's see if this is working. Okay, we are live. We are playing some Marvel Champions tonight. Hello. Okay. Let's see. I am going to be playing Star Lord, just the starter deck, against Green Goblin, the Mutagen Formula campaign. So I'll do a little bit of startup. A little bit of setup as we go. Okay, so we've got. Peter Quill, we've got the Star-Lord deck, got my uh, extra side stuff set out here, Green Goblin, Stage 1, Stage 2, we are not playing Expert because I'm just going to have a fun game right now, so we need Mutagen Formula and Standard Encounter Sets, one Modular Encounter Set, which is going to be Goblin Gimmicks, put a Goblin Thrall minion into play engage with each player, shuffle the Encounter deck, advance to Stage 1B. Cool. So let's find us a Goblin Thrall. Guess. Yeah. It's not in that deck, so let's search this one. Goblin Thrall. Hello. Alright. Let's get these all together again. Mutagen Formula. Standard. And my obligation. Group them up, flip them, give them a shuffle. Okay, what do we got? Oop. Right, we're not playing with the version that's Norman Osborn, so just the one side. Okay, unleashing the mutagen. Green Goblin has released a toxic mutagen gas on New York City. When completed, in player order, each goblin, each player not engaged with a goblin minion must discard three cards from the encounter deck and put the first goblin minion they discarded this way into play engaged with them. Okay. And let's see, it goes to seven and it starts with two. Let's find some threats. Oh, just do that. It's been a while since I've played on tabletop. Uh, simulator. We've been playing the Galaxy's Most Wanted campaign just on our table. Uh, Jen and I, I was playing Rocket, and she was playing Groot, and if you haven't heard, it is a very, very difficult campaign. It took us like three or four tries to beat Drang, the first villain in it, and uh, we couldn't do it with the starter decks for the characters. Um, we, Jen was playing Protection, and I was playing uh, Aggression, which was the starter deck bit. Uh, we, switch, we switched those out, and so I'm playing a, a Rocket Justice deck, and her Groot is... Her Groot is Aggression. And it worked a lot better, we got through Drang. And then we did Collector 1, which was very, very hard. We had to do two or three times as well. Uh, we did Collector 3, or sorry, Collector 2, the third villain. And woof, was, we were like destroyed two times. And then the third time we were, we were so close to winning that we decided we're not having fun just beating our head, heads against the Collector more and more. So we decided to have completed him. Um, and we'll move on to Nebula and Ronan later, which I have now heard are even more difficult. So looking forward to that. But Star-Lord. I played like two games with Star-Lord, three games maybe, just solo games, and they're a lot of fun. I love Star-Lord. He's uh, got this like push your luck uh, style where you just keep like taking encounter cards and, and hoping that you can deal with all of them, which feels very on-brand. Um, I don't know if it's going to go well in a Goblin deck, because uh, Goblin is nasty all on his own. So, like, putting Star-Lord up against Rhino is not a big deal. Like, oh no, you hit me, or you're tough, I can deal with that. But Goblin has so many strange things, I, I think it's going to be pretty terrifying. I, I'm not expecting to win this one. We'll see how it goes. Star-Lord is a pretty strong deck. 
Okay, so checking this again. Uh, when completed, we're going to discard cards and get some get some goblins. So we don't want him to complete that. We want to beat him up. Um, I have a goblin thrall in play. He's got guard. No fun. Okay. Uh, can't attack the villain uh, while this minion is engaged with you. Uh, one attack, one scheme, three health. All right. So, let's give this another couple of shuffles, draw our cards. Peter Quill has a hand size of six. Ooh, I, for, I almost forgot the setup. Good thing I'm reading this out for everybody. Um, setup, search your deck and discard pile for a copy of the Element Gun upgrade and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Uh, and he has the Smooth Talker action. Choose a card from your hand, swap that card with the top card for your deck, limit once per round. Okay, so let's draw six. Or draw my... Identity card, you know, whatever. Uh, draw six. What have, what have we got? We've got the power of leadership, always good. Star-Lord, um, in his pre-made version, is a leadership deck. I mean, obviously. Uh, his super cool thing on the other side, which we'll see right away, is that he turns all allies into guardians. Nova Prime, always good. After you play Nova Prime from your hand, defeat a non-elite minion. So we might be looking at that to just get rid of that Goblin Thrall. Uh, nowhere, cool, play only if your identity has a guardian trait, increase your ally limit by one, after a player plays a guardian ally, exhaust nowhere, that player draws a card. Very cool, I can't wait to play this with, um, with a full table of guardians, like get Groot, Rocket, Gamora, and Star-Lord all playing, switch them out for Drax or Agent Venom, um, four player games, like, that'll be super fun. Daring Escape. So this is part of Star-Lord's kit. You deal yourself a face-down encounter card to get effects. In this case, you ready your hero and then draw a card. Pretty cool. He's got good stats, and so readying is super, super good. Um, he upgrades allies. I, I don't use this very much. I'm thinking about a deck where you put Ronin and Iron Man, the leadership allies, in with Star-Lord. Um, because then you can get the Laser Blaster onto Iron Man for free, and if you put it on Ronin, he gets his extra bonuses as well. And both of those, well, Iron Man's a 4 drop, and, um, and Ronin's a 3, so when we flip to Star-Lord, you'll see how he can get them out, like, super cheap. As opposed to, you know, Nova Prime has a 5, but we do what we do. Cosmo, he's cool. When Cosmo attacks or thwarts, name a card type, then discard the top card of the deck. If that card is of the name type, Cosmo does not take consequential damage, which is nice. He's a two-cost ally, but um, he's he's going to be a resource this turn, I'm pretty sure. All right. So, I don't have um, any good cards to play the power of leadership on, so I'm going to... Oh, I forgot again. I forgot again to uh, do the setup and search my deck for an element gun and add it to my hand. Okay, so let's do that. Element gun. Not going to be playing you this turn, I'm sure, but it'd be good to have it. There you are. All right, so the element gun. Restricted, max two restricted cards per player. Hero, atta hero action, attack. Exhaust element gun and spend one resource of any type. Deal three damage to an enemy, this attack gains piercing. Yeah, they're good. They look like they're expensive to get out, but they're actually not, because we're Star-Lord. So let's flip over and show you why. Star-Lord, two thwart, two attack, one defense. Each ally you control gains the guardian trait. And what could go wrong? Interrupt. When you play a card for... Oh, no, I flipped. I'm going to flip back, because I'm just reading this. I'm going to show you stuff. Uh, deal yourself one face-down encounter card and reduce the resource cost to play that card by three. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go back. We're actually Peter Quill, because we're going to smooth talk her. I don't remember if I shuffled my deck, so we'll give it another shuffle just in case. We're going to put the power of leadership on the top, and we're going to switch it with the current top, which is another element gun. That's not awesome, but... No. Okay, now we're Star-Lord. We definitely want to play Nova Prime. It's going to pop the Goblin Thrall right away, so... Yeah. Paying Nova, playing Nova Prime and using what could go wrong. 
what could go wrong? Let's just take it in counter cut. It's fine. It's all good. Um, I still got to pay two more. So it's going to be, it's going to be Cosmo and the Laser Blaster. Yeah. Because I want Nowhere. I want Daring Escape. I don't want to drop, well, I could drop one of the Element Guns. I don't find that I use two. Although, although I don't use two when I'm playing against like Rhino or Crossbones who don't have that many minions, but if I'm just going to keep getting Goblin Thralls, maybe I should have both element guns up. That might not be too bad, just to be able to throw out all that damage. Okay, anyways, so we played Nova Prime. After you play Nova Prime from your hand, defeat a non-elite minion. Goodbye, Goblin Thrall. Let's kick you out. Alright, well, attack for three. Gobby, how much health do you have? 16? Yeah, exactly right. Okay. Oh, we didn't read his thing. So one scheme, two attack, forced response. After Green Goblin attacks and damages you, place one threat on the main scheme. Okay. All right. Well, I don't feel like doubling down with Daring Escape this turn, but I also don't feel like dropping it. But I know my next card is going to be Power of... Uh, of leadership, which is not going to help me out next turn. So I think, uh, you know what, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Everybody okay if I cheat a little bit? We didn't play Nova Prime yet. Having looked at all of my options, we're going to use the uh, drop an element gun and the daring escape to play nowhere. And then we're going to take the encounter card, drop the other two cards, play Nova Prime, Kill the minion. I got one card left in hand. Uh, nowhere we're going to exhaust it. We're going to draw one card. I mean, honestly, it didn't make super amounts of difference. I was going to get that card anyways, and I wasn't going to play it this turn, but order of operations. Pay attention. Don't just talk to the camera. <laughs> uh, okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to thwart for two just to make sure that we're keeping it down. Seven is not a lot. And then we're going to attack for three. So let's get some consequential damage. Three damage. Thank you, Richard Ryder, Nova Prime. Aerial, Nova Core. Super awesome. Okay. I think we're good. We don't have anything else. I dropped the uh, Daring Escape, so we only had one. So let's ready up and draw three more, because we got a hand side in the five. Yeah. So let's take a look at our new things. We got another power of leadership. That's not great. Um, Star Lord's helmet. While you are in hero form, you get plus one hand size for each face down encounter card in front of you to a maximum of plus three. Power of leadership and sliding shot. Play only if you control an element gun. Hero at action, attack, deal 5 damage to an enemy, deal 2 additional damage to that enemy for each face down and capture card in front of you. Super cool. Love it. Great card. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I see what we'll do next turn, but for now, it is Goblin's turn. Uh, this goes up by 1 per player, so threat by 1. Hmm. And Gobby's going to attack me. I could throw Nova in the way, but then he dies, and he's just too cool for that. So Gobby's going to attack for two. Oh, just two. Nice. Oh, I need a health counter. We need to do, do we have a Star Lord counter? Shout if you see it. I don't see it. Looks like they haven't put a Star Lord one out yet. Okay, so let's just grab the blue one, because I like blue. And I've got 10 hit points. So, uh, he just dealt two to me. One, two, out, owie, out. Um, let's see. Let's get another encounter card. What could go wrong? First one, Goblin Glider. Attached to the enemy with the highest printed hit points and without another Goblin Glider attached. If you cannot, this card gains Surge. Spend double energy. Discard this card. Yeesh. I mean, at least I didn't get hit for an extra three. And Goblin Thrall! Okay, guard. Let's just put him out. Let's do his thing. Do I have double lightning? I have double power of leadership. I 
feel like that's probably a good idea to get rid of it. Um, okay, so before we make those decisions, let's let's just chat a little bit. Let's talk about what's going on. Um, I've got like a low-key fun announcement going on, which you may have figured out based on our, our background right now, with like the Star Trek above me, that um, on this Twitch channel we did... Uh, a superhero cipher system mini campaign back in April. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we did uh, four sessions and uh, great players, super fun story, great sponsors. Roll20 came out and sponsored us, and Monty Cook Games sponsored us. And we had giveaways and we had a lot of fun. It was super good. And it was a lot of work, and I enjoyed it, but I knew that there were other ways that I could be, like, you know, doing this without doing exactly that. And so um, I put together one of my ideas, which is a West Marches style campaign. So if you don't know West Marches, quick explanation. The idea being you have a different group of players every session, and the players actually schedule the session. We're not going to do that exactly. but. Um, there's sort of like a shared list of hooks and things, and that's very player-driven. So the group of players who are going to play on one particular night look at the quest log or the available hooks, and they come to a consensus and say, we're going to do that. And then they tell the game master or dungeon master or whatever what they want to do, and then uh, the game master just preps that, and then runs the session. So... I want to try that out. Uh, I'm, I'm grabbing a bunch of players from our Massive Damage Adventures group and uh, running this. But the, the twist on it is that it's not going to be D&D &D from, like, you know, you're, you're starting in a village and you're going out into the wilderness, which is the idea of West Marches. Instead, we're going to have a ship. It's going to be the USS Artemis. Um, and it is an ambassador-class ship. It's pretty old, and so it's got a little bit of, uh, you know, rundown systems and a lot of character. And you, uh, if you tune in, it's going to be like an ensemble-style episodic show. We're just going to have a single story for every Twitch stream, which will only be about two hours long on Wednesday nights. I'm thinking like 8 p.m. Mountain Time, so like 8 to 10 p.m. Hard stop at 10, where we wrap it up. And, um, so every time you tune in, uh, it'll be a different story, but it'll be the same setting and probably with returning characters, but mixed and matched in the way of like the super fun late nineties, next generation style storytelling. Um, what else can I say about it? I mean, it's, uh... We're, we're going to be doing more giveaways. Modifius Entertainment, the creators of Star Trek Adventures, have uh, said that they will support the stream and donate a couple of gift cards for their online store. I'm trying very, very gently to pull this out. There we go, we did it. Um, Star Trek Adventures, if you haven't seen it. Ooh, there's the game. All my flags, I take lots of notes on books. And, here, give me a second. Bear with me. There's the Klingon book. Ooh, ooh. I mean, it's basically the same thing. It is the core book. It, this, both of these are the deluxe core books. This one is the faux leatherette cover. Um, both of them are just core books with the core rules, but I mean, this is from the Klingon Empire's perspective, and then this is from the Federation's perspective. I like having them both. And the dice. Lovely dice. So if you haven't ever played Star Trek Adventures, it's uh, what's called a 2d20 or momentum system game. And so you get a target number, you roll two d20s and you want to roll low to accrue successes. That's what it is. 
got a couple of really fun ideas. Uh, we'll be using Roll20, as always, and uh, building some cool OBS stuff for Twitch. Um, yeah, that's the fun announcement. There's nobody in the chat right now, so nobody can ask me questions about it, but I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll ask questions when you see this on the YouTube, and you uh, put them in the YouTube comments, which I promise I will check. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay. That's the fun announcement that we're working on. The next thing that we're doing. Um, follow the Twitch, or, yeah, follow the Twitch, because, I mean, hey, please follow the Twitch. But also follow us on Twitter. Uh, that's where we're going to get all of our, you know, um, details out. Sorry, I had an additional thought there that was completely non-pertinent. I should finish the thought coming out of my mouth before I start thinking other thoughts. But yeah, follow on Twitter. I will have more updates there as time goes on. There's going to be some fun surprises. I'm pretty pumped for it. Okay, back to the game. Star Lord. Fighting Green Goblin for some reason. I'd love to see it. Okay, so we could get rid of the glider by spending the two powers of leadership, and we could drop the uh, element gun, but then we wouldn't get to use the element gun. Do I want to take one damage versus get more cards versus... Yeah, I think I'm happy to take the one more hit. And actually, you know what? I'll probably let Nova Nova suck it up. Okay, so yeah, let's let's start with Nova. He's gonna attack for three. One, two, three. Ow. Woof. And he's gonna be my defender, and it's gonna be Oh wait, hang on. We can't do that. We have guard. Rewind that. Okay. Let's start again. We are going to play the element gun first. I need a, a little bit more space here. Let me just move this all down a little bit. Because I like to have my allies off to the side, and I like to have my weapons and gear kind of there. So I'm going to use Star Lords. What could go wrong? And take an encounter card to reduce a card that I'm playing by three. Woohoo! Element gun down. Then. Yeah, we're going to drop the sliding shot. We're just going to um, discard it to pay for Star-Lord's helmet so that we can get uh, six cards next turn. Then we're going to drop the power of leadership to trigger element gun. So let's read that again. Exhaust element gun and spend one resource of any type. Deal three damage to an enemy. This attack gains piercing. Goodbye, a goblin for all. Alright, then Nova's going to attack for three. One, two, three. We'll add that damage back. And then, threats at one. I'm going to go for damage. Two damage on Gobby. I think that's it. We didn't play an ally, so we don't get to use nowhere. This is a passive, so we're good. Let's ready up. And we're going to draw five cards, because we got one encounter card and a hand size of five, so, and one in hand. Let's draw five. What do we got? Another sliding shot. Always good. We finally have some stuff for this. Blaze of Glory. Oh, Air Supremacy. I have all the things that make me want to keep Richard Ryder out rather than get hit by let him get hit by Goblin. Okay, so let's go through the cards. We saw the Laser Blaster. It just adds attack and overkill. That's cool. And we got a double of those. I'm probably going to toss that into an element gun. We've got Blaze of Glory. Each Guardian character gets plus two thwart and plus two attack this phase. At the end of the phase, deal one damage to each Guardian character. This is incredible when you have um, uh, the card that readies you by taking another thing, because you can just be like, blaze of glory, attack, ready, attack, sliding shot. It's super good. Um, and then air supremacy. Choose up to X enemies where X is equal to the number of aerial characters you control. Deal three damage to each chosen enemy. Um, not super great right now, because I don't have Star-Lord's boots, so I don't have aerial. So it's spend two to get three damage. It's actually not great. Um, I wish I could save the Blaze of Glory but, for Richard, but I just don't want to get hit. I want to stay on hero form for at least one more turn. So let's go over here. We've got plus one. We've got Gobby, who's going to attack me for three. And Richard is going to defend me. Uh, it was only four. I could have taken it, but I didn't want to. I 
did not wanna. Woo! There we go. Bye, Richard. We loved it, you. Okay, new stuff. Let's get you out of the way. Encounter cards. Death from above. When revealed, hero, green goblin attacks with plus X attack, where X is equal to the villain stage number. Okay. So we're gonna be for the next turn. Seems likely. Yeah, I gotta, gotta take it. Uh, three plus one for the stage number, so four plus one, five damage. Okay. Oh, it's, it's getting a little dangerous. What could have gone wrong? What could, what could go wrong? Goblin Soldier. Uh, when defeated, deal one damage to the engaged player. One one, put Goblin Soldier into play, engage with you with the boost. Five hit points. I want Richard Ryder back again. That's not awesome. Okay. All right, my turn. Uh, three hit points. Not fun. All of my cards. Look at that. Physical, 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 physical. I can't get rid of the Goblin Glider this turn. And I bet you it's a hero action. It is. So I can't even smooth talking a card away and hope that I'm going to get the, uh, the energy resource that I need. So... I think we'll drop a laser blaster to use the element gun and deal three damage to the Goblin Soldier. Ooh, did you see that that slickness as I was moving it? You can ooh, oh, it's one damage. No, it's three damage. Anyways, um, not gonna blaze of glory. I could sliding shot for seven damage and nearly knock out Gobby. Gobby schemes for one, so it could go for four plus one from that. Like if this is a three boost card, I lose the game. Especially if this guy's still alive. No, I think it's worth it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna save the sliding shot for next turn. Yeah. We might pull an ally. Okay, so Star-Lord's going to attack the Goblin Soldier and just clear that out because that's one threat we don't need. Then, I got nothing else I want to play. We're going to flip over and we're going to use Smooth Talker. I'm hoping to grab an ally with power of leadership. So let's throw Blaze of Glory down because we'll want that later. What do we get? Pulse Grenade. I don't like those. I'm definitely cutting them from my deck. Pulse Grenade. Hero action, attack. So it's an upgrade. You pay two, you put it in play. Discard Pulse Grenade and choose an enemy. Discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. Deal one damage to the chosen enemy for each boost icon discarded this way. It's a, it's pretty good. Like, it's okay. I'm, mm, I'm going to play it because Laser Blaster and Air Supremacy don't do anything for me right now. Um, I'd rather see new cards, so we'll put it out, and I will probably be like, oh my god, the pulse grenade was amazing, how could I have thought that I shouldn't play that? It was the best idea to play it. Um, also, you know, just randomly check out my shirt. Ooh, oh my god. You see the shirt? Yeah. Homemade shirt for a Halloween costume many, many years ago. Uh, what do we got? Okay, I am on that side now. I'm going to be healing. Oof. Wish I had more heals. Okay, there we go. We're going to draw four. Ready up and draw four. We got the Blaze of Glory I put down. Another Pulse Grenade, which I don't want. Blaze of Glory. And the Jet Boots. Jet Boots are good to have. When Star-Lord would take any amount of damage, prevent one of that for each face-down encounter card in front of you. Very good. Super good. Um. Yeah, exhaust jet boots. So one third turn, of course. Pew, pew, pew. I mean, I wish I'd gotten an ally, but I'll probably just try and find one with smooth talker next turn. What do we got on this side? We go up by one thread. Gobby schemes for one. Let's see if I would have died. Was it? Nah, no, it was just a one. So for two more, five is dangerous, especially with me only on three hit points. 
Um, only one encounter card because I didn't use my smooth talker. I'm not my smooth talker, but what could go wrong? And a goblin soldier. Oh no! I forgot to take a damage when I defeated the other one. Okay, one fewer hit point. That's no good. That's no good. I'm really hurt, and I can't even stay here. Okay. That's the end of Gobby's turn. Let's drop a Blaze of Glory. Draw a Daring Escape. Okay. Uh, yeah, deal yourself one face down. Ready your hero and draw one card. Okay. Alright, so let's heal for three. Flip over. So we need to play the Jet Boots. We need to play Daring Escape. And we get sliding shot for free. And then we need to use uh, another card for element gun. So the first thing to do is daring escape and see if we get a better option. So zero cost, do yourself one face down encounter card, ready your hero, draw one card. Oh, I knew it was the blaze of glory. I put that there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, two attack and two thwart. Having four thwart would be super good, but I don't want to take the damage, even for getting the boots. Even though it's one to one, oh, it's worth it, it's so worth it. Uh, we should just blow up the grenade and see if I can kill that goblin. But then I'm going to take another damage. No, it's, yeah, it's one defeated. But I'll take a damage if he attacks me anyways. I'm in a hard place. I'm in a hard place, folks. Okay, so five damage would definitely kill the gobby. Oh, the element gun might. Okay, so let's pop the pulse grenade and hope we get two damage so that the element gun can clear that out and then we can sliding shot the big bad, throw out the boots. Yeah, and maybe take a damage. Oh god, high risk, high reward, right? That's Star-Lord. Okay, discard Pulse Grenade and choose an enemy. Discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. Deal one damage for each boost icon. So this is going to be to the Goblin Soldier. What do we got? Nothing. Big nothing. Two. That's what we needed. Okay. Two damage. And then drop the pulse grenade to use the element gun deal three more damage woof alley then so I could blaze of glory and clear four threat but then I don't get my boots out and I need my boots oh that's discarded and look the pulse grenade was so good okay I'm just going to clear two threat, because we're on hero side, it's fine. Oh my goodness, four hit points, I am going to die. I mean, my boots will soak too, but I'm going to die. Okay, so I'll drop both blazes of glory, I just can't afford the hit points right now, we'll throw out the boots, and then we'll use sliding shot. So, we take one face down card to make it free, and then we deal five damage to an enemy, and then two additional for each face down encounter card in front of you. This is not the goblin that blows up when he moves to another face. That's the other one, right? I hope. Oh, he's going to hurt me. No, I've done a terrible mistake. I've made a terrible mistake. Like prevent two of it. Okay, whatever. We're doing nine points of damage. Five plus two plus two. Yeah, nine points. Take that goblin. I'm dropping you to nine. To nine. All right. Reveal the next one. Yeah. One reveal. Do two encounter cards to each player. That's not what I thought it was. It is the other one. The other one when you reveal the risky business, he deals damage. No, I get four encounter cards this turn. I get five encounter cards this turn. Oh no. At least I'm gonna soak a lot of damage with the boots, right? Oh no. Okay, 18. 
Oh, I knew Star Lord was gonna be tough with this guy. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be so good. Okay, um, I got a full boat. I get plus one hand size for each face down encounter card to a maximum of three. So I get eight cards. So I have one, so we're drawing seven. We got Yondu. Finally get to use some power of leadership. Target practice, so if you have a weapon attachment that's plus two attack, not super useful because I keep throwing away my <laughs> my pistols. Uh, got the leader of the guardians. Each guardian character gets plus one thwart. That's pretty cool. And remember that all allies become guardians. So, oh, well, Yondi's already a guardian. Doesn't matter. Um, C-I-T-T. -T. I actually don't... Oh, this is the cool interstellar travel travel ship. Oh, I remember that! It's been a while since I read the original Guardians co comics. I read them uh, in like the spring of 2014 leading up to the movie so that I'd know what was going on because the characters seemed cool, but I'd never heard of them before uh, the trailer in like 2013 for the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Anyways, whatever. Uh, spend two resources ready a Guardian character. That's super cool, particularly with a Blaze of Glory. That's like an extra six damage off of two cards. Um, Air Supremacy, so we saw that already. I have Ariel now, because I have these boots. Uh, Beta Ray Bill, always good after he attacks and defeats a minion, remove two threat from the main scheme. That's going to be pretty... Oh, wait, hang on. Yeah, when completed. So we're not going to lose if this goes, we're just going to get a goblin. And it's going to be scary. Uh, and gutsy move. Remove two threat from a scheme. Remove two additional threat from that scheme for each face down and counter card in front of you. If only I could have had this last turn, but that's alright. Because we're probably going to play Yondu. No, we're probably going to play the Guardians of the uh, Leader of the Guardians for free. Get one face down and counter card. Then we're going to remove four threat. It's going to be good. I promise. As long as I don't die right now. Uh, okay. One goes up. It's at four. Now he attacks me. Four. Oh, for three. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I'm dead. Uh, no. No, I'm not. Okay. So three. Six damage. Exhaust the boots. Reduce it by four. Two damage. Ah. Ah. Oof, that was rough. Now let's see if I can survive five encounter cards. I mean, we didn't think this was going to be a long one, right? We didn't think so. Hey, Big Boss Hard Facts, how's it going? Yes, Star-Lord Trek. Uh, <laughs> um, what's going on right now is uh, I'm playing this lovely Star-Lord deck against Gobby, having a lot of fun. And... We've got Star Trek going there because I'm letting people know that the next Twitch stream for Massive Damage Adventures is going to be Star Trek Adventures. So, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip these five encounter cards right now. What have we got? No! <laughs> okay, Shadow of the Past. Here we go. Um... Reveal your set-aside nemesis minion, put it into play, engage with you. Reveal your set-aside nemesis side scheme and put it into play. Shuffle the rest of your set-aside nemesis encounter cards into the encounter deck. If your nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains surge. Yada yada. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's make it real hard. So, yeah. We got Spartoi Cunning, Spartoi Cunning. Yeah. These ones are all going to go in here. Shuffle those up. We got a cool budding crime syndicate. Let's let's make this a little bit bigger. What's this do? In your tiny head, the line between a criminal enterprise and an empire is thin. In reality, nobody cares. All they care about is who holds the gun. Jason of Spartoi. Uh, Hinder two. When revealed, place two additional threat here. So it's got four, and we're getting another encounter card. Cool. Or thread. Uh, yes, this is Tabletop Simulator. I have found it to be a really, really nice, comfortable way to uh, to play Marvel Champions and a bunch of other games. Um, and we need to put out Mr. Knife. Let's 
Let's make him a little bit bigger too. Mr. Knife, two scheme, two attack, elite, retaliate, one. The first treachery lead cage player reveals each villain face gain surge. Oh no. Because I bet you this is a treachery. It's a treachery, regenerative healing. The villain heals X damage where X is equal to double the villain's stage number. If no damage is healed this way, this card gains surge. Okay, okay, it can't surge twice. Because we haven't dealt any damage to, to Gobby yet. He tries to heal four, he can't. It's got surge, and it's got surge. Cool, right? First treachery. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Totally good. Just adding another one. What do we got? I see you. One revealed green goblin attacks you. If you're in alter ego form, ego, the, if you are in alter ego form, do not give the villain a boost card for this activation. Okay. Well, I just lost. I pushed it too far. Star Lord did it. Let's see what happens. Two plus one, three damage. Oh, three damage. Oh, I can defend. I defend. Oh, and then it brings me to exactly zero. Cool. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, let's see what else we would have gotten. A Goblin Glider, uh, which would attach... Oh, Mr. Knife with a Goblin Glider. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and then we've got all oh, the villain schemes. So it would be two plus one, three more, which would pop our scheme. Oh, oh wow. Oof, okay. Um, when reveal... Okay. As the cloud engulfs the city, those unfortunate enough to be caught in the vapors begin to shiver and shift, mutating into hideous goblin creatures, mutagen cloud. When revealed, advance to stage 2B. Oh, and we did complete this. Uh, each player not engaged with a goblin minion must discard three cards from the encounter deck and put the first goblin minion they discard this way into play. Uh, pumpkin bombs, goblin soldier, regenerative healing. Okay. So we would have gotten a soldier, and then this would be at 4 out of 11, and we would have gotten another goblin soldier. And this is pretty nasty. Uh, the X, the acceleration, is equal to the number of goblin enemies, including green goblin in play. So right now, this would go up by 3 each turn. Yeesh. Not fun. Um, wouldn't have been great. So let's see. This turn, I just want to see what I would have done. I would have put out Leader of the Guardians for the one. Um, probably would have played Yondu. Probably should have played him first. So just like pitch two random cards. No, one random card and the power of leadership. Yeah, no, power of leadership, two cards. Yondu, he's a guardian, so nowhere would draw me a card. You get a sliding shot. Not enough. Yeah, that would only deal 7 damage. So we could take out Mr. Knife. Drop 2 cards for the gutsy move. Clear that out. Flip over, try and heal. Not gonna happen. Super fun, though. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, this came out last turn. Anyways, so yeah, that was me taking a deck that's like, give me all the encounter cards against Green Goblin, which is, your, my encounter cards are very scary. Uh, I'd love to play this one again. This was pretty fun. Maybe I'll stream it again. Um, but yeah, so let's talk uh, a little bit about Star Trek again. Um, it's going to be short games about two hours long it's going to be west marches style so we're going to have a group of players that'll change every particular streaming date and um, there's going to be a list of hooks or points of interest that people can uh, choose when they sign up for the game and then i'll prep that particular adventure and it'll be that one little contained story from like 8 p.m. Mountain to 10 p.m. Mountain on Wednesday nights. And Modifius Entertainment donated a couple of gift cards that we'll be using as giveaways each episode, so that'll be super fun. And I've got a bunch of really cool things planned. 
my goal there is to make it like a an episodic uh, ensemble style game a lot like um, the next generation Voyager Deep Space Nine where you have a whole bunch of characters that kind of come in and out and maybe people get favorites and maybe uh, some storylines go off to the side but then loop back in um, yeah and yes free stuff free stuff always good uh, I'm looking at some other opportunities right now and uh, we are looking to start that up in about three weeks so if you want more info uh, follow on Twitter at SkyhammerK um, follow the Twitch channel of course probably do another couple of streams just leading up to it and um, yeah otherwise what's new with the podcast uh, we've got just nine days until we put out our seventh C episode which is our uh, next one coming up we just started a new story arc on rise of the ancients the D&D campaign so that's on massive damage campaigns the podcast and then we just recorded uh, a three-part mini campaign review game of Cyberpunk Red by Artelsorian Games. So really excited to put that out. Artelsorian Games has been really good to us. And then we just recorded uh, the Dragon Age game, which is going to come out in a couple of months. And review games for Vampire 5th uh, Edition and Actung Cthulhu. So lots in the pipe, lots coming down. Very cool stuff. And I still actually have to edit the Heroes of the Reef stuff so that we have it in podcast form for everybody. But uh, because I lost, I mean, I guess that's it for the night. Um, Big Boss Hard Facts, thanks for coming out and hanging for a little bit. Sorry that it wasn't a longer stream, <laughs> but a uh, little bit more time back for you. Yeah. Cool. Well, for anybody who is watching this on YouTube, once again, our Twitter is at SkyHammerK. Uh, Instagram is at SkyHammerPress. Although, you should also check out at SkyHammerDice on Instagram because uh, my wife and I uh, are starting to do handcrafted dice. We've got a couple of uh, demolding videos on there and a couple of pictures. We ordered masters with our uh, Skyhammer Press logo, which you can see in the little bottom bottom right. Oh, wait. Oh, that way? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. We've, we're talking a lot about our process and like uh, trying out different silicones for molds and um, we've got some interesting styles right there. Oh, what is this? Green Goblin can beat Star-Lord. That's canon now. I suppose it is. I look forward to the day that Green Goblin shows up in the MCU. Uh, I think it'll be really, really fun. Maybe, maybe we'll see him in the Multiverse of Madness. Who knows? That'd be great. Okay. Well, good night, everybody. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.